Hey y'all, it's Maxine, your favorite wine specialist, guiding you on your journey through fine wine. And it is Monday, so you know that it is time for wine Q&A. Recently, I've been having a few discussions about rosés. What are some of my favorites? Could I feature certain rosés? And it's summertime, so people tend to enjoy this wine, and it has definitely gained popularity. So even men are now drinking rosé. So one of the requests I received was to discuss a French rosé. So I am going to hop right in. The wine that I am drinking is the 2017 Parasol. And this will be featured in my story so you can have a closer look of the label. Rosé is so popular right now that the June issue of Wine Spectator did an article on variety of rosés that you should try this season. And I have been checking off my list. It gave a really detailed list um, of various regions. So I would encourage you to check it out if rosé is your style of wine that you enjoy. The notes I get from this one, on the nose, I picked up fresh watermelon, fresh strawberry. Upon tasting, I received red berry, a hint of rose petal, and a hint of soft citrus notes that drinks really well. This is a very elegant, refreshing wine. I would pair this wine with grilled fish. If you don't have a shellfish allergy, peel and serve shrimp would be perfect with this. When I was trying this earlier, that is actually what I was enjoying at the moment. And it paired very well with this on a nice day that we're having in the Raleigh-Durham area. But let's get into the origins of this wine. So this particular wine is from the Southern Rhone Valley in France and it is from an area called Provence. Provence is a Mediterranean area of France, and they are known for their rosés. That is a great start when you are exploring French rosés to begin at Provence. Half of their wine production are rosé wines. So how do you make a rosé wine? So you make a rosé wine with red grapes, and the predominant red grapes of that area are Mouvedre, Syrah, Grenache, and Cinso, and those grapes are featured in this blend. So you make, so you make the wine, you get the juice, and then you have skin contact. So those dark berry notes that you see, so when you see a red grape versus a green grape, that's skin contact, and that's what gives red wine this color. But with the rosé, you just have minimal skin contact, just enough to get a nice pinkish color, whatever the tasting uh, notes that the winemaker wanted to have or the color, this is a nice pale pink color. Um, on a previous episode of rosés, I talked about how I like light-bodied rosés. I like very feminine, very refreshing and elegant rosés. Those are my favorite styles. But back to the production of rosé. So you just have minimal skin contact and it's, it's its own style. It's not a red wine, it's not a white wine. It's its own style, just enough skin contact to impart a color, but not classify it as a red wine. This wine is also great if you have a rosé fan. Uh, again, as I said, it's pretty popular right now, so this is also a great start to that one. Don't forget to submit your questions for wine Q&A. I feature them, and I will do another rosé. This will be a feature. We're gonna, we started off in France with the area of Provence, so when you're reading the label, try to look for wines that say Côte de Provence or Provence. Um, that is that region and just explore just explore what they have explore lighter medium and full body from that area to see if that's the particular style you like but again don't forget to submit your questions for wine Q&A to be featured drink good live well